So most of you probably already know about this whole situation, but almost every single piece of media that covers it talks about how much of a triumphant underdog story it was for the Sox. And I mean, there's no denying it, it definitely was. But ladies and gentlemen, switch the perspective for just a second and you'll see that this is one of the biggest chokes, if not the biggest choke in MLB history. My name is Fico. subscribe if you like this video and let's talk about the 2004 Yankees and their generational. Collapse. Let's lay out a few important precursors before we talk about the actual series in question. If you don't already know why we're here, it's Yankees versus Red Sox with a trip to the World Series on the line. The 2004 ALCS. Coming into this 2004 ALCS, the Red Sox hadn't won a World Series in 86 years. Their last title was back in 1918 during World War One. So with that being said, the Sox are either going to be fired up to try to make it happen, or they've completely lost lost hope a long time ago. It had been so long by this point that Yankees fans will actually make fun of the Sox by making signs like these and chanting 1918. Yikes. Needless to say, with how much of a non-threat the Red Sox are to the Yankees, I mean, literally the first time they faced them in the ALCS was 1999, and they crushed them. And then they played them here in 2003, the year before this, and Aaron Boone happens. The Yankees are probably feeling pretty confident that they will once again stomp the Sox and head on back to the World Series yet again. But I mean, hey, the Sox have been pretty dang good in this 2004 season leading up to the ALCS, so who knows what'll happen. I wonder. But before that, it's everyone's favorite time. Ad time. Hey, buddy. You mind if I use your uh, power real quick? Uh, uh cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was perfect because this video is sponsored by Factor. That's right, this video is sponsored by Factor. Factor offers delicious flavor-packed options on the menu each week to fit a variety of lifestyles. From keto to calorie smart, vegan plus veggie, and protein plus. Prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians, each meal has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals. And I think this goes without saying, but Factor is easy. No prep, no fuss, no mess. Just pop it in the microwave and you're off to the races there, buddy boy. I don't know how to gritty. And if you're looking to mix it up, you can add a protein to select vegan plus veggie meals each week. Choose from 34 plus chef prepared, dietitian approved weekly options featuring premium ingredients such as broccoli, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. You can even add add-ons to your meals. With 45 plus options, including some of their delicious breakfast items like apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, and potato bacon and egg breakfast skillets. And did you know they also have beverage options such as cold pressed juices, shakes, and yes, smoothies. I've been eating Factor for the past few days now, and I must say, they are quite delicious. They even have gluten-free options. I was recently diagnosed with celiac disease, meaning if I intake any gluten, my body starts to eat itself. But Factor had me covered and sent me some delicious gluten-free options, so I was ready to tackle the day every day. With all the options that Factor offers, they make it easy to stick to my goals. Let's ask this gentleman what he thinks about Factor. Hello, sir. Are you enjoying your... Okay, that answers that question. He loves it. If you want to be as happy and full as that guy, head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code SRS50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's Factor75.com or click the link below and use code SRS to get 50% off your first Factor box. Factor, when it comes to food, they have food, and it's good food. Thank you so much, Factor, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. The first game of this series kicked off on October 12th, 2004. Needless to say, the Yankees, and especially their fans, were feeling pretty confident. They've been here multiple times, and they've crushed them every time. In the first inning, the Yankees put up two runs without letting the Sox get any. So far, so good. Which, keep in mind, the Yankees for a little while in this series did look good. Up until the top of the seventh inning, the Yankees seemed to be doing what they always do against the Sox, destroying. They're up eight to zip before Boston finally gets their first run. But this is where the Yankees start to get shaken up a little bit. In just the top of the seventh inning, the score goes from eight to zero Yankees all the way up to eight to five. Getting five runs put up against you in a single inning after destroying every inning before that 
That'll get you a little spooked. By the end of the game, the Sox are able to put up two more runs, but they do eventually get beaten out by the Yankees, ending this game 10 to 7. It was a bit of a roller coaster, but at the end of it, the Yankees won, but I mean, at least the Sox didn't get completely destroyed. Good for them. Game two was a lower scoring and closer game that took place the next day on the 13th of 2004. The first run is put up by the Yankees at the bottom of the first inning. And after that, no more runs are put on the board until the bottom of the sixth inning when the Yankees sent a missile into the right field stands with a runner on first, bringing the total score of this game up to three to nothing Yankees. At the top of the eighth, the Sox put up a run of their own and that will be the last time they score that night. <laughs> the final score of this game is three to one and the Yankees now have two wins over the Sox zero in this ALCS series. Game three takes place two days after this on the 16th with the series shifting from New York to Boston. And this one goes a little more the way the Yankees have been expecting. With the final score coming out to be 19 to eight, with the Yankees getting more than double the runs the Sox put up, they are now a very comfortable three games ahead of the Sox. Now, in case you didn't know, the ALCS is a best of seven series. So if the Yankees win this next game, they're going to the World Series. That's it. Best of seven, and they already have three. Safe to assume they're probably feeling pretty good and may even have their mind on strategies how they're going to win the World Series, while the next game with the Sox is more of a afterthought. I mean, after all, no one has ever come back in the history of the MLB down three to zero before. The Yankees blowing this is an impossibility that's probably not even being thought about. Now, with that being said, Let's move on to game four. Now this is where things start to get interesting. At the top of the third with a runner on first, A-Rod hits a swamp donkey into left center field, bringing the score to two to zero Yankees. I know it's only the top of the third, but it's really not looking too good for the Sox right about now, and it's looking pretty good for the Yankees. The rest of this game turns into a back and forth war between the two teams, with the Red Sox ending up a run ahead of the Yankees in the sixth. The Yankees put up two more runs at the top of the sixth, putting them ahead yet again. But that would be the last runs the Yankees would score in this game. Bottom of the ninth, three outs to go, and a trip to the World Series is right in front of the Yankees. The greatest closer in baseball, Mariano Rivera, is on the mound to close this out. Kevin Millar leads off for the Red Sox and works a walk. Dave Roberts on to run for him. And run he does. Roberts takes off and he's safe. Bill Miller rips a base hit right up the middle and Roberts flies on in and scores. The Red Sox are still alive. Barely, it would seem, but they're still alive. Except this game just kept extending. Hanging on by a thread with their backs against the wall, the Red Sox just won't die yet. And with the game tied 4-4 to by the bottom of the 12th, they're gonna need something really special to happen to pull a win out of this. And then, David Ortiz steps up to the plate with a runner on first. And just like that, the Red Sox pull their first win in the ALCS series over the Yankees. Now, of course, they're far from out of the woods, as they are still backed into a position where the Yankees still only need one more win to advance. The Yankees might be a little shaken up by this, but again, they only need one more win and the Sox would need three more. So, they got this, right? No. No, they don't. The biggest choke in history is happening right in front of them. To them. I mean, you saw the title. The Yankees let the Sox win the next three consecutive games. The next two wins for the Sox are still a battle, and the final scores show that the Yankees just kept losing by that little amount. How on earth did this even happen? Dude, they were right there. Mariano Rivera on the mound, three outs to go, up three games to none. They had it so easy. How? How did they lose it? And you want to know something? In Game 5, they really could have just put out the fire. The Sox came out of the gates in that game swinging, putting up two runs in just the first inning. At the top of the second though, Bernie Williams smacks one into right field to answer back with a Yankees run of their own. The Yankees do manage to keep the Sox from scoring any more for a while, and at the top of the sixth inning with the bases loaded, Derek Jeter sends one down the right field line, bringing three guys home and putting the Yankees ahead of the Sox by two with a pretty impressive slide from Miguel Cairo. They had a 4-2 lead lead going in the bottom of the eighth, and their bullpen allowed David Ortiz to go yard and start a rally again. And they had more shots and extra innings, but they just could not get this game to go their way. Ortiz would walk this game off with a single, sending it back to Yankee Stadium in New York. Even still, the Yankees only have to win one of the next two games, and they're at home. And then it'd be like, none of this ever happened. The Yankees still do have two games over the Sox, but at this point, I'd probably be pretty damn spooked. Kurt Schilling 
took the mound for Boston in Game 6 and may or may not have stuffed the Yankees lineup on a bloody sock. I mean, there's rumblings that it may be fake, but who knows. What we do know is that the Yankee bats were totally asleep in the first game back home. Schilling only allowed one run in his seven innings, coming from Bernie Williams in the seventh. They managed one more run in the bottom of the eighth on a Derek Jeter double, and that was it. Which was a problem for the Yankees, considering they scored four. All four of those runs coming from a Boston rally in the top of the fourth. The Yankees bats were so cold that all it took was one bad inning to sink them for the whole game. By some miracle, the Yankees became the first team to give up three games and allow their opponent to force a game seven. But just to really add salt to the wound, the Sox absolutely destroyed the Yankees in game seven in their own stadium. There's really no point in making game seven feel cinematic here. It was over as quickly as it started. Boston jumped on the Yankees starter Kevin Brown with a two-run homer in the first inning by guess who? David Ortiz. Brown then allowed Boston to load the bases with one out at the top of the second. The Yankees pulled him, and the very next pitch from his replacement, this happened. The Yankees have allowed six runs and have only gotten four Sox hitters out. The bats just couldn't match that, only notching five hits and three runs for the whole game. Ten to three loss. The Boston Red Sox have just done the unthinkable. They stole the trip to the World Series from their bitter rival, the Yankees. And just like that, it's over. The Yankees have just went from having the most comfortable lead you could possibly have in the ALCS to choking it so hard that their longtime rival is now going to the World Series and the Yankees are going home. Boston went on to win the World Series in a four-game sweep, something Jack from Lost could never have imagined. Boston Red Sox won the World Series. <laughs> if you wanted me to believe this, you probably should have picked somebody else besides the Red Sox. No, they were down three games to none, and then they won eight straight. Sure. <laughs> Their curse was over just like that, and from there, they've won three more championships in the 18 years since then a true reversal of fate. The Yankees, while winning the World Series in 2009, have never truly escaped this. It's easily one of the most embarrassing things in the history of their franchise. The mighty Yankees knocking on the door of the World Series and having not really done that to this level on a consistent basis since. And when the Yankees fell down 3-0 to the Houston Astros in the 2022 ALCS, the Yankees tried using the Red Sox completely embarrassing them as motivation to do it themselves. It sounds like a cool principle, but it gets way worse. They even brought in David Ortiz himself via FaceTime to share some words of wisdom, which were probably way more roasting and condescending than advice should be, especially if what he said still remains private. And even the Boston Celtics recently tried to conjure up motivation from the 04 Red Sox as well. They managed to come back from down 3-0 to zero to force a Game 7 in the NBA's Eastern Conference Finals against the Miami Heat. And then they blew it at home in Game 7 in about as bad of a way as the Yankees did. To me, this just proves the generational fumble of the 2004 Yankees still remains untouchable and unmatched. So this all begs the ultimate question that we haven't really touched on or answered yet. How did this happen? The crazy thing is, it didn't really take much. The true answer really is just a couple of poorly timed pitching meltdowns, poor situational hitting, and bats going cold for just those four games. It took that little to let Boston steal the series from them. Just four games of not being able to get all the pieces of baseball to click together to cause the biggest choke in the history of Major League Baseball. And there is something to be said about that. Things can change really fast in baseball and in life. If it seemed like things slipped away in the blink of an eye, they really did by baseball standards. But in this case, that blink of an eye felt like a torturous eternity for the Yankees fans and still haunts them nearly two decades later. All it took was a really poor timed lapse in being able to get the job done and it torpedoed the entire series and the entire season. Baseball is a crazy, random, unpredictable game. Maybe nothing else in baseball history proves that more than this series. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making this one. Um, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do plan on making stuff eventually, I keep saying that, but I actually do. With that being said, have a lovely day. Peace.